Roll call. Ms. Bridges? Here. Here. Stewart? Mr. Garang? Giacobbe? Here. Ms. Hale? Mr. Kennedy? Here. Mr. Miles? Here. Mr. O'Reilly? Here. Mr. Simmons? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Mike, do you have copies of the uh, add-on? Okay. Bernie? Mike, I'll just move through it and then I'll stop for questions. Notice of this meeting in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act was given by the Board Secretary February 4, 2020, by sending notices to the Union County Local Source, the Home News Tribune, the Broadway Public Library, the City Clerk of Broadway, and by posting notices to the Bolton Board outside the Board Office, the 7th and 8th Grade Academy. I tried that without my glasses. <laughs> I almost started dragging up. Okay, at this time we'll move to reports. Well, um, the first report is the report on student services. Um, this is your typical uh, report for um, on referrals, reevaluations, transfers, residency, truancy, um, checks. And since it's the first month of the year, the year and the current month are the same. Any questions? Okay. You also have copies of your principal's reports that are posted. The HIV report for September is nothing happened. The graduation re pathways report, this is a brief report that just updates us on the past graduation where we had 257 students graduate. And then there's the breakdown on passing competency tests. 112 in language arts, 161 in math. Meeting alternative requirements were 78 students. There were 19 students who were denied graduation, but it had nothing to do with the graduation assessment. It had to do with not completing the required coursework. Okay. Um, motion number five is the annual report of student safety data. This is stuff we're required to report out every six months and then also annually. This is where um, you're looking at violence, vandalism, substance abuse, weapons, confirmed HIV, alleged HIV, and other incidents. And you report it out for each six month period and then the total for the year. You have those reports. Um, and then there's the comparison to the prior year. And thankfully, in most in almost all the categories, um, this past year was lower in various um, incidents than the pri than the eighteen nineteen school year. And any questions from the board? No. Okay. That's it on the report. Okay. 
Fourth Secretary. Any relations? All right. Curriculum and education. Okay. The, the first motion under curriculum and education <coughs> is a memorandum of agreement with the Rutgers University Graduate School of Education and the public and the district. Um, this clarifies the roles and responsibilities of each as we take on Rutgers interns. Recall that we're one of about six districts in the state that take Rutgers interns under this memorandum of agreement. So it's just laying out roles and responsibilities. And as I mentioned in your update, this has been reviewed by the board attorney and Rutgers took their input and incorporated it into the memorandum of agreement. Um, it would be good if we could vote on that one tonight too. Which one's that? This one, the memorandum of agreement, because then it would just allow it to be signed and hand it back to Rutgers. They're going for reaccreditation. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion number two is a whole set of policies that we do need the board to also vote on tonight. Um, that will take some time now to go through. Uh, we need the first reading at this meeting and the second reading at the other October meeting. These are all related to um, the various technology needs for dealing with remote instruction. Okay. Um, the first policy about bringing your own device is allowing the use of um, personal devices for academic reasons with permission from a staff member. It also reminds people, these are the changes to the policy that I'm telling you about that the recording, either audio or video, including still pictures and screenshots, cannot be done at any time in the locker rooms, the restrooms, the nurse's office, or administrative offices. Um, and that's pretty much the substantive changes there in that policy. Any questions from the board? Moving on to the policy about procurement procedures for child nutrition programs. This one I think is a new policy. Yes, this one's all new. Um, I just want, I think from reading through this, it seems like, you can probably help me some with, I don't know about there this policy. There were some policy. changes in the federal procurement law, so that's uh, capturing that. Right. For, we get federal funding for our procurement program, so that's it's, so. Changes of federal law, and it's also to make sure you know you allow for competition, you know those types of things. And uh, okay, any questions on that one at all? The next policy is district records and reports. The only change here is that we are keeping all electronic communication, i.e. emails, for 10 years. <laughs> That's the only change in that one. Electronic communication by school staff. Um, The big change has to do again with inserting the, the um, that we are keeping electronic communications for 10 years and then the whole section on online education. And it's a reminder that online classrooms and virtual classrooms are still classrooms so all related district policies apply to classroom behavior and conduct that's happening. Um, And also the reminder that any of those video conferencing things that are happening during class is for classroom use only. So it's for educational and professional purposes only. Any questions? Okay. Um, 
the school attendance area and assignment of students. The only change in this policy was the fact that we still had 18 as our class maximums for preschool. That's no longer allowed with the preschool grants. The class maximum is 15. That's the only change there. On to the pandemic response team regulation. This is new and just details everything that was, it's literally lifted out of the state's guidance called the road back. It's all brand new. Listing the, the minimum um, types of people that should be on the team and their responsibilities of the pandemic response team, which is in essence that the pandemic response teams in the buildings are responsible for the implementation of the reopening plans that were developed by the reopening committee. Any questions? And then the next pair is internet safety and technology, the policy and the regulation. Okay. Um, it's in the policy, it defines staff and students versus guests when you're on the district network. Um, it talks about um, covering district owned or sanctioned equipment that is used and what is appropriate versus inappropriate use of it. Uh, the fact that we will have individual email accounts for our students for the purpose of school communications. Parents must sign off on the acceptable use policy by electronic signature for the email to be activated. Um, the maintenance of district websites. And again, um, the, it prohibits, um, there's several prohibited activities. The new one added is capturing audio or video recordings of others for non-educational purposes without their consent. Okay. Um, and it also restates that the district will not use any personal data um, or isn't requiring the use of staff or students' personal data plans to perform tasks. Okay. Any questions on that one? That's the policy. Okay. The regulation, um, there's just some, mi mostly some minor changes here. They were talking about web two communication tools and that's just been changed to digital communication tools and talking about reasonable and appropriate monitoring of students by staff when they're involved out on the internet. Um, and parents accepting the use of various school software that's um, been provided by the district. Also in this regulation, there talks about a lot of rules for um, use, appropriate use of technology. But those are basic updates to that, to those items. Any questions? Okay. Mostly those ones were updated to term terminology in the, in the regulation. Okay. 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 Motions three and four we already discussed in closed session as related to students. Motion five is approval of the fundraisers. And again, fundraisers, there has never been any door to door selling. And now they're all subject to adherence to COVID-19 state mandated restrictions in effect at the time of the fundraiser. Questions on fundraisers, okay. I, I don't, I, my numbering may be off here. Hmm. Um, motion six we discussed again because it has to do with an individual student. Seven and eight are rescinding a contract for speech services because the company could not provide the services as we need them. And motion eight is appointing um, speech services to another group another individual. Okay. Is this motion 
9, the next set of policies. There's another whole set of policies, but these are not going to be voted on until the, the public meeting on the 27th. Um, the first policy on non-discrimination and affirmative action it has um, this, th this basically just has um, provisions added into it for lactating uh, staff and students so that they must be uh, provided a place where they can feed their child, express breast milk, all of that good stuff that goes along with that. Um, that's both in the policy and then that's in the policy and then the regulation is all new which gives you all of the details on support for breastfeeding mothers. Milk expression, a place to express the milk, staff support, appropriate signage, the employee's responsibility, um, milk storage, and use of break, use of break time. Any questions? And these are all up on the Google Drive for yeah. if you guys have any details you need, you can look into right. it further. And and what's nice is the new the new stuff, the, the new text is all bold, is all highlighted in yellow. So it's easy to find what's new. Um, the next policy on domestic violence actually has a significant update. A lot of it was removed and replaced. Um, So there's a whole lot of text that was removed and completely relate, replaced there with definitions of domestic violence, an abuser, a perpetrator, um, intimate partners, restraining orders, victims, work workplace incidents, designated human resource officers. And so it's laying out roles and responsibilities for these people um, and, and the requirements for reporting domestic violence and the needs for maintaining confidentiality, both of the domestic, of the specific episode of domestic violence as well as the employee continue to maintain confidentiality of the employee's records. Um, and gives you an idea of an action plan to follow in terms of supporting a staff person that's involved in domestic violence. The next pair is the policy and the regulation for attendance, absences, and excuses. There is actually no change to the regulation. We just like to keep the policy and the regulation together with the same new approval dates. So we, we know that they've been at least looked at and kept current. The a policy for attendance and absences is just updating what is an acceptable excused absence for various religious observances, college visits, take your children to work day, and the new one is observance of Veterans Day. And redefines or emphasizes the definition of chronic absenteeism, which is being absent 10% of the days that they are are supposed to be in school. Okay. Any questions there on that? And again, the regulation rule has no changes. We just review it anyway and re, re, um, re approve it. Next sent we have for married, pregnant, lactating students and support of um, mothers. This is the same as the one we just talked about for staff. This is how it now applies to students. So this is the lactation provisions, the policy and the regulations. Same thing except applied to students, not staff. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next policy on health. There's been a big section added about um, students that have uh, epilepsy and seizure disorders on what has to be done in terms of um, handling the student's individual health care plan and uh, 
recognizing the symptoms, attempting to have the student fully participate in everything they can while controlling their seizure disorder. Moving on to the policy on curriculum ado adoption. The only change in here is it's to provide instruction on the contributions of persons with disabilities and lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people where appropriate in the middle school and high school curriculum. Okay. Then the next policy on the guidelines for evaluation and selection of instructional materials. The only change there is when adopting materials, we adopt inclusive instructional materials that per portray the ec cultural and economic diversity of society, including the contributions of persons with disabilities and lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people where appropriate. This is all with both of these are in keeping with the new laws. And then the last one, gifted and talented. This went through a major update. Again, identifying, um, coming up with definitions of what is a gifted or talented student, what is an instructional adaptation, and that you need to have appropriate adaptations and services for gifted and talented students from kindergarten through grade 12 and um, giving you some outline, some information on what a gifted and talented program should be, the, the curriculum and the instruction, should have coordinated services for these students, and outlining a complaint procedure and the requirement for information to be up on the district's website about the gifted and talented program. Okay. Any questions? The next motion, we're done with policy. <laughs> 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 okay. um, the next motion is approving a new, um, the American History textbook. Um, this is a, it was a, actually a pretty cool textbook yeah. and is used for both, I think, both US 1 and US 2. So I'm sorry, I forgot to bring the textbook down. It's pretty thick and it's really nice to see that we're gonna use it for two different courses so the kids don't get overwhelmed with that. Um, it's really pretty cool in terms of having a lot of interactive stuff in the textbook. Um, and promotes a lot of critical thinking. It also has, the, pro the this textbook has built in accommodations for uh, English language learners, students on IEPs, 504s. It's a textbook that can be adjusted for honors level. Um, they have rich primary sources and visuals and a lot of online resources. The, um, the group examined, I think, three or four different textbooks, both a group of teachers and students um, looking at the textbooks. This one was found to be both teacher-friendly and student-friendly and had a lot of, a lot of nice online sources, um, resources and supplemental enrichment activities. And then one thing that really pushed it over the top for a lot of people um, was the fact that all of the online sources, you can pick the language that the student sees the material in. Yeah. So it would really help our English language learners. And we're having more of them at the high school that are not Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna really help those kids um, with things. Can, can I just say something? Sure. So at this uh, was presented at the education committee meeting the other night. And um, it, it's, it's a wonderful book. And I know that the thing my husband would love because he loves the History Channel, it partners oh, right. with the History Channel. Yeah. So you can go and get videos from it and it gives you links to it, lots of online kinds of things. But, um, it, and it's, but it's for this year, right? It's for the 2021 school year. I don't year. think so. No? I don't know. Well, I, I have it was budgeted for the 2020-21. Okay, maybe it is. Yeah. I'm just looking at all this okay. stuff according to your sheet. I'll double check that. Okay. You're voting on it next meeting anyway. So. 
it, it, it covers the new standards that will be in, um, in, implemented in 2022. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um. Oh, and, and also, <laughs> you can say. <laughs> You can save your notes. You can take notes about the book and save them in a Google Drive. So that's pretty cool, yeah, I thought. When you're annotating the text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions on the history book? The next motion is a whole lot of different curricula that are being, that were updated. Um, Some of them, I think, let's see. Um, some of them were minor updates. Some of them were total rewrites. Some of them were actually, we couldn't find anything electronically. We only had paper curriculum. So it was due for an update. But you can see there's a whole range of courses. These are our, um, all high school and academy level courses that were put in there. Um, the next motion is approving the district assessment calendar for the 2021 school year. This is one of those things that really makes no sense whatsoever, but we are required by law to approve the district testing calendar in the month of October, even though the state has not told us whether there will be any standardized testing in the spring at this point in time. So what you're seeing there is um, the tests that we use internally, the teaching strategies gold for our preschoolers, link it assessments for um, grades one through eight, our PSAT and national merit tests, our access tests, um, and then the, um, and ACCUPLACER, the ASFAB, ACT and SAT, and advanced placement exams. There's none of the other tests because the state hasn't decided yet whether they're doing those. Um, motions 13 and 14 we discussed in closed session as they pertain to individual students. The next motion, is it 15 or 14? I'm forgetting my, the high school dance team club. 14. Yeah. Um, this is a, a new club that's being proposed at the high school and would replace an inactive club. I forgot, I'll have to look and look up from the principal which inactive club um, she would be taking out. Um, they, they've got their club constitution and bylaws written. Um, Allison Dooley is the, going to be the faculty sponsor. They would be practicing up to four days a week. Um, it's just meant to help create a sense of community for dance talent at the high school. And um, they'll just give students an enjoy enjoyable new way to express themselves in a positive way. Anybody would be eligible for membership. Um, no limitations on the number of students that can be joined. Um, and they may be selected through tryouts. They would have a couple of captains. And that's it, new club. Okay, any questions? Um, and then the last motion there is to renew the agreement with the city of Rahway to provide nursing services um, to all eligible non-public school districts within the, um, within the district. This is $1,836 is the amount that we have to put through. Oh, that's going okay. to ECYC. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Finance and facilities. So, one, we're going to have a bill list at the end of the month. 
September to – that should say July and August. We may have September, but that should have been corrected to July and August for the cafeteria report, but we know we have to. We'll have budget transfer. Number four and five are our resolutions, my resolution and your resolution to approve that there are no older expenditures. Number six, we're going to have to rescind – we have a contract with Milani, and they can't provide the services for athletics, so we're going to – right now we're getting close, and we're going to have to go out to bid again. I think everybody's having a similar situation with contractors that just can't provide the service. Number seven is a – they call it an emergency agreement, but we currently are not under our standard team service contract with Pompeo because we're operating under a different format, the summer feeding program. So this is what the state allows in order for them to be able to provide the service and make some money. Number eight is also for non-public security aid. This is contracting with the ESC to provide that service to the non-public for number eight, nine is 192, 193 services, ten is non-public textbook aid, eleven is the technology aid, and twelve is in the event we have any Title I funding for non-public, they will handle the providing of those services. So this money is all allocated from the state for the non-public. Okay. Anything under correspondence? No. Discussion information? No. Okay, at this time we'll take public comment. Any? We on? Is that on, Mike? No. It's on. Is it? I'll just speak. I'll use my teacher voice. Michael Keat, Broadway Education, President. I just want to talk. Obviously, we've had a change in schedule with the virtual and live and hybrid instruction. I believe that's in the best interest of staff and students as well. As we are returning into the buildings, our K-6 staff returning into the buildings in mid-November with our high school returning in mid-December, one of the things that we want to make sure and continue to work with the board and the superintendent is to ensure that the classrooms are well ventilated and following the guidelines that we had set forth in the board instruction. So we look forward to sort of working together, walking around the buildings, making sure that those rooms are up to date as well. Just wondering also sort of we have a lot of clubs that are looking to sort of chomping at the bit to work with our students and wondering when the sports activities, the extracurriculars would be approved. So unless I missed it in here, I thought it was supposed to be tonight, and so I was wondering about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Bernie Robson, 725 School Street. Just one question you're voting on tonight under the curriculum D, number two. Over the years, there have been so many issues and incidences going on with personal devices in school. I know as these personal devices have kind of gotten much better with the technology, I just want to know, Dr. Camp, you did read about a lot of the policies here. Is there protection to the other children, God forbid, that a child that brings his or her own device in is recording other individuals, even a staff member? I know you just did a briefing on it, but I know there's so many critical things there, and it may be covered in another policy. It's just that you brought it up this evening, and I just wanted to ask about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robson. Anyone else? Dr. Camp? Yeah. Yeah, that is covered in those policies. That's one of the big changes where it's emphasized in multiple places in the policy that there is not to be, there's no audio or video recording of anyone without their consent. So obviously they'd have to know if they're consenting. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Mr. Mike's question? So, on the club site, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe that's going to be scheduled to be approved next week. Yes. It'll be voted on next week. Or I'm sorry. What's the date? 20, at the next meeting, Mike. Yeah, yeah. If you like, I can share the list. I don't know if you guys, I don't think you guys have that list. I can share the list with you as to what will be approved. Yep. Seeing no other comments. Go ahead and close that portion of the meeting. Okay, so now I'll need a motion to take action on the handout numbers one through six and number eight and fourteen. Is that a motion? Motion. Tom? Second. Eric? Questions, comments? Roll call. Ms. Bridges? Yes. Mrs. Giacobbe? Yes. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mrs. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Miles? Yes. Mr. O'Reilly? Yes. Mr. Timmons? Yes. And Mr. Lopez? Yes. And then on page two of the public agenda, under curriculum and education, I need a motion to move D number one and number two. Laura, second. Deborah, questions, comments? Roll call. Ms. Bridges? Yes. Mrs. Giacobbe? Yes. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Miles? Yes. Mr. O'Reilly? Yes. Mr. Timmons? Yes. And Mr. Lopez? Yes. Good. Seeing no other business, I need Thomas. Just uh, before we close, uh, Dr. Camp. Could you just repeat um, the information about the days of school with the reopening plan and, the, and coming up? Okay. Um, at, as, as is listed in our reopening plan, we, we had proposed three different, three different um, teaching options. One is remaining full virtual. The other one is what we refer to as a flex 212 or the hybrid model where there is some in-person teaching and other virtual or um, independent study type of, of instruction going on. And then there is the full in-person. Now the full in-person one we said we kept warning everyone all along would only run if we had sufficient staff. And so right now what we're looking at is um, and, and the plan originally started having us returning all of our students on November, um, by the second marking period, which would be November 16th. And so when we looked at that and we saw that that week of the 16th and then the following week were really chopped up weeks, we decided to push it back a couple weeks. And so we're bringing back all of our K through six uh, students on November 30th for either they can stay again per the governor's executive order the parents can continue to keep stay completely virtual so we have probably about at least half of our students doing that the other ones would be coming in on the hybrid model and then the students there in that hybrid model are split into two groups an a group and a b group in a five-day week the A kids would be coming in on Monday and Tuesday with direct instruction with the teacher. The rest of the time they work virtually. Um, and on, on Wednesday, all of the students are working virtually with the teacher. And then the A students on Thursday and Friday are working on independent um, assignments. Okay? And then with the B group, they would be in, in person with the teacher on Thursday and Friday, working virtually with the entire class on Wednesday, and they're doing their independent assignment work on Monday and Tuesday, the B group. That's how that's generally laid out. Now the instruction, it does sound like they're not getting a lot of instruction, but it's going to be different than what's happening with the full virtual. 
because it will be condensed instruction on those two days with assignments that we'll need them to be working on for those other days, okay, when they're not in contact with the teacher. So they'll have three days of contact. Each group will have three days of contact with the teacher and then two days where they're working independently. Right now, we are postponing bringing back our 7 through 12 students um, until right now we're, we're talking January at this point in time. That has to do with the complexity of scheduling, um, especially at the high school level in terms of, so what we may end up having happen at some, with some courses is, well, let me back up. What we're trying to avoid is having a teacher attempting to work with a group of children in person while at the same time working with a group virtually. Because every, every other district when I've talked to, they said it really just isn't working well. The teacher is, you know, really not knowing where they need to focus their time. So it's gonna be some seriously condensed instruction happening when they are in person with the teacher. Take these off, I'm fogging up my glasses. Um, and, and that, so it's gonna be a whole different style of teaching and a, and a different mode. So, but I will say is, unfortunately, there'll be some situations where we cannot avoid that. For example, probably Mike will be one of those people that will be attempting to do both because He's the AP physics teacher. If he has some kids who are staying full virtual and others are in person, it's going to have to be a whole different thing that we'll be working out that way. So, um, and that's with those single section courses and single teachers. So if we have, and, and we may be seeing some of that happening, say, with some of our world languages, um, where we have a single teacher, say, the Italian teacher and the French teacher. We're, you know they'll be figuring it out slightly differently. So they may be deal, dealing with virtual and in-person kids at the same time. Other things, and we're, we're being as flexible as possible as we can to provide as much education as possible for all of our kids. Uh, another thing that we're doing is some of the classes, if the classes are small enough, the kids will be assigned to both A and B. So they would actually come in for four days, okay, if the class is small enough. They would come in for the four days. Um, that, so it's, it's, a, it's the scheduling is what we're still working on with the academy and the high school in terms of figuring it out so that we can maximize the time, maximize the time the children have um, with the, in person with a teacher and not killing the teacher or the kids. Thank you, Dr. Camp. Okay. I'm trying to think if there was anything else in that reopening session. Um, our bilingual students have started and uh, or have been offered so they started yesterday this was a group and, and 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 I'll take the blame for this one we probably should have started them at the beginning of the year along with our preschoolers and our self-contained special ed kids this group of students is particularly the bilingual students are particularly fragile with their education because they don't have the opportunity of having parents at home who have any way to help them because the parents speak no English themselves. And so, um, you know, it was important that we try to bring those kids in. And we realized that right the first couple of weeks. It just took us this long to manage the logistics. And that's the thing that, that sometimes um, is very frustrating for all of us in education. When we've been speaking to people at the state, they don't really seem to understand the complexity of, um, of schools because we, we've had discussions with some people from the governor's office and saying, can you give us more lead time? Can you give us more help? Can you give us some more support? And we've been told, well, we give businesses two weeks notice and we don't see what your problem is. And we just kind of very politely respond, well, we're not a public, we're not a private business. If the governor tells us to open, we need to open. So a private business can choose to remain closed if they want, if they're not ready. But we have to open. And with all due respect, one of my colleagues said, we're not a hair salon. You know, we've got, you know, even our smallest buildings with, a, with say, a couple hundred kids in them, you're still talking to close to a couple hundred kids plus probably close to 100 adults that you have to get in, out, 
move them around, have them be safe, make sure the rooms are ready, make sure the cafeteria facility is ready. There's a whole lot of logistics that goes on with running a school. So that's why, you know, when we make decisions, it's not something where we could decide if the board decided this week they wanted to do something different, we wouldn't be able to make it happen next week. It takes a couple of weeks to line everything up. And we're trying to do everything first and foremost for the safety of our children and then also for the safety of our staff. And then we can see to um, everybody's education. Um, I can tell you this, I know to a person, everybody wants to be back the way we were last year. We just want to be over with all of this stuff. We're uh, teachers, teachers love children. They want to be there with the kids. They want to be interacting a lot with the kids. We just can't do that to jeopardize the health of our children and our staff. So there's where we are. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Okay. And I just want to ask a quick question. So. The survey, is there just this one survey that was sent out? We're still waiting for 15% of the surveys to be sent back. Right. But the pr principals will be notifying the parents of the schedule that their students will have closer to the date? Uh, yes, that's, that, that stuff, is, that information may have already gone out. Um, part of the reason we were initially thinking of, we had started a survey in July of the parents asking them about their teaching options. And we were initially thinking we would update that survey around this time. But the problem we had is um, for quite a long time we were having trouble getting responses back from parents. And so we thought we're not going to start this all over again and try and get all of the parents to redo the survey. However, we have told the parents know that if they've changed their minds from what they replied in the summer, they can let us know. And um, we, the, the, um, the principals and their support staff have been calling parents, emailing, mailing, doing everything we can. A lot of what we've found out is that we don't have appropriate contact information for too many of our families. And so we've had to update that. Um, and then um, we're still doing that. And we're still to the point where it's probably about 15%, 10, depending on the building, um, anywhere from 5 to 15 percent of the parents have yet to respond to the survey. We're just plugging them in somewhere where they fit and we're going to deal with the changes later um, because we have to get moving to be able to finish um, scheduling the, all of the buildings. Uh, it's a little, it's, no, it's just different in the elementary schools. I was gonna, almost going to say it's easier. It's just different when you schedule an elementary building because for the most part, most of the time the child stays with a single teacher, but they do have all their specials, music, art, um, and um, there's still recess that we're going to do and lunches and a whole lot of other things to figure out. So that scheduling has to happen. So, so we're working on it. And, and, and it'll, we'll have hiccups and we'll have little speed bumps and we'll just keep modifying things and changing and moving along. But. I, uh, we will not be bringing anyone, we're not bringing staff or students back into any rooms unless we know that there's proper ventilation in the room. Um, yeah, that's one of the things, that's number one right there. Um, I don't know what else to, to say about that. I don't know if there's anything else on that. Reopening. It's online. Yeah. We probably should go ahead and announce about the after school tutoring. Sure. Okay. One of the motions that was passed tonight um, was a, a appointing 18 teachers to help us with some after school tutoring. This was a collaboration that we started a couple of, uh, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we are going to be offering after school tutoring three days a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. The reason we don't do Wednesdays is the teachers are all busy on Wednesdays with other things after school. But uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and we're not doing Fridays because nobody wants to work late on Friday anyway. We, it's time for a break on Friday. Um, two hours each each um, day. There will be two, te two certified teachers at each location. The locations will be here at the academy. We're also going to be at Zion Lutheran Church. 
the rec center and DASH um, program. And students will sign up online and parents will be told they need to go through the parent portal and sign up their child for after school tutoring. This is to help the children with understanding concepts that they may be struggling with. Um, I mentioned teachers. We're also um, asking our Rutgers and Kane teaching interns to volunteer to help work with some students there too. Um, we'll be sending out flyers real soon. The teachers will, or the, the parents will sign up. The parents sign up in the parent portal. There is an after school tutoring registration form and you must sign up at least one day in advance for the tutoring session. You can sign up for as many tutoring sessions as you like. You could sign up for one hour, the first hour from four to five, the second hour from five to six, the full two hours if your child really needs help. You can sign up for multiple days. Uh, we will be reaching out to parents if they sign children up and then don't show up. We will be reaching out and asking them why they're not showing up, especially if they're holding out a slot that another child could fill. We're asking for the pre-registration because again, with COVID-19 restrictions, we wanna make sure we don't exceed the capacity of our sites. Um, there's a whole lot of information that's gonna be sent out to the teaching staff so they know that this is coming out too. Um, obviously the 18 teachers who have applied and signed up for, for doing this work, um, they know about it and they were approved tonight so that that's, a, that's all starting, this is all starting next Monday. Um, Teachers can also recommend to parents and or older students that they go for extra tutoring. Um, let's see, did I get everything that's in that? Be, we'll be advertising the after school tutoring on all of our websites. And I will mention it here now. I just found it, I forgot. But I wanna mention it next week, especially in public. Really nice, uh, a nice, uh, I don't know, it's not quite an award. But anyway, our early childhood supervisor has been selected by the New Jersey Department of Ed to co-lead the preschool standards committee. So we're gonna get those, those are being updated, the preschool standards, and so it's a, very big accomplishment for Jennifer Alphonse and the recognition of her expertise um, in this area. So, okay. Thank you, Dr. Very excited about that one. Okay. Good. You good, Dr. Kim? Yep, that's it. Anybody else? Seeing no other business, I need a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Those policies again, though. <laughs> 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 <laughs>